Hunting quasi, fossil hunting. Fossils? Oh, who wants to look for a bunch of boring old rocks? <laughs> well, I do. Fossils aren't just rocks, quasi. They're made from the remains of creatures that lived long ago. See? Still looks like a bunch of old rocks to me. Thanks, Tunip. If we find any big fossils, we'll need you to bring in the work lights, okay? <laughs> Octonauts! Let's find some fossils. Yeah, I'm not finding anything. Fossil collecting takes patience. Just move any loose rock and check carefully. Flappity flippers. <gasps> Peso, you found a fossil. I did? Yes. And it's a very impressive one, too. Tunip, better bring in the lights. Lighter, lighter. Let's see. Eight fins, thick scales, a tail with three parts. <gasps> Jumping jellyfish. This is the fossil of a coelacanth. A what he what what A coelacanth. They lived 65 million years ago back with the dinosaurs, but there aren't any around today. This fossil is an amazing discovery. In that case, we should remove it carefully and take it back to the octopod to study. Yeah. Who turned out the lights? But how did that come unplugged? There's no one in these caves but us, is there? <gasps> The fossil! What happened to it? It appears our fossil has disappeared. <gasps> A tail with three parts, just like the fossil. Ah! Ah! Huh? What is it, Quasi? I know what happened to the fossil. You do? It came to life and swam away. Um. Uh, Quasi, fossils used to be living things, but now they're just rocks. They can't come to life. They can if the fossil is really... A jumping jangle bones! J j j jumping jangle bones? According to pirate tales passed down by me granddad, Calico Jack, jumping jangle bones are spooky fish that look like rocks. But they come to life and try to scare you away when you get too close to the places where they like to hide. Places like these sea caves. Hmm. I've never heard of a jumping jangle bones, but one thing's certain something took that fossil, and we're going to find out what it was. Octonauts, to your stations. <laughs> Something or someone has taken the coelacanth fossil we found in this cave. A coelacanth fossil? A very rare discovery. I do hope you're able to find it. Captain, I've been watching the cave and nothing else has gone in or out since you've been in there. Then the fossil and whatever took it are still in here with us. Keep an eye on the cave and let us know if anything comes out. Thanks, Dashie. Right, let's split up and search the cave. Everyone, pick a tunnel. Aye, and watch out for the jumping jangle bones. All right, you bony beast. I know you're in here somewhere. Ah I've got you now, you ghostly. Get back here. Nothing to be afraid of. 
there's no such thing as jumping jack. Hello? It's it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Wait! Come back! We just wanted to ask you about. Shellington, I think it's heading your way. Thanks, Peso. Wait, tune in! Whatever took the fossil is heading this way. Everyone, keep your eyes open for anything that looks like... What was that? Barnacles to Octonauts. I think I hear something up ahead. I think I hear something too. So do I. Me too. Sounds like it's right around this corner. Whoa! Uh, Octonauts! Oh, so it was just you I heard. Yeah, and that's just my tail you're squishing. Oops, sorry, Quasi. Looks like it is only us in here. Aye, it's only us and him! Wait! This way! It's... it's... What? What? The fossil! The jumping jangle bones must have turned back into stone before we could catch it! But Quasi, jumping jangle bones aren't real! Oh, how else do you explain how the fossil moved in here by itself? Hmm, good question. It's still a mystery. <gasps> um, I'm starting to think you guys just don't believe my monstery tales. What is it, Peso? The, the fossil! It's alive! The fossil's alive? <gasps> the fossil's alive! <gasps> ah! uh! <gasps> oh, sorry everyone, my fault. I didn't mean to frighten no one. I wasn't frightened, just uh, stretching my legs. I... you a jumping jungle bones? Uh, no, sorry. I'm just a coelacanth. But that's impossible. Coelacanths haven't been around since the dinosaurs. We are still around. We like to stay out of sight, though. Keep to ourselves. Fascinating. A real-life coelacanth. I can't believe my eyes. But why did you move that fossil? Oh, right. Sorry. It's just I'm kind of shy, and I'm not used to visitors in my cave. I just thought that if I hid the fossil, you'd lose interest and leave. Well, unless we can get past these rocks, we're never going to be able to leave. Looks like we might need some backup. Barnacles to Dashy. Come in, Dashy. Ah, we must be too deep in the caves to make radio contact. No worries, mateys. We'll just dig ourselves out. We don't want any more rocks to fall. One, way! <laughs> seen such a big fish move like that. <laughs> it helps to have eight fins and a big tail. But doesn't that hurt? Oh, not at all. My scales are super tough, like armour. Hmm. Do you think you could swat away these rocks while we dig ourselves out? Uh, I think I could manage that. <laughs> <laughs> You thought it was me. Right here. Catch! Oh, the door. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the help back there. And sorry again about disturbing your cave. <laughs> we didn't think anyone was home, let alone a real living coelacanth. Ah, don't worry about it. But next time, be careful who you call a fossil. <laughs> <laughs> Put her there, matey. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Still alive. <laughs> <laughs> 
Octonauts, our mission here is complete. Dashie, prepare to launch the Octopod. I'm on it, Captain. Captain, there's something wrong with the ship. It's... <laughs> Tweak, any idea what just happened? I've already found the problem, Cap. It's the bubble converter. It's broken, and the octopod can't take off without it. Can't you just make a new one, matey? I could, but that would take days. Or months. Months? <laughs> it looks like we don't have days or months. We've got to do something now. There is one other bubble converter. Ah, you mean... Uh-huh. Uh, of course. The old octopod. The old octopod? What old octopod? Uh, did we not mention this is actually the second octopod? Uh, no, matey. I think I'd remember another octopod. Oh, well, then this here's the new octopod. But way back when, before we were even the octonauts, there was an old octopod. It never did work quite right. Well, we crashed it. But when we came back to fix it... It had become an artificial reef, home to hundreds of creatures. So we had to leave it where it was. The old octopod should still have a working bubble converter. Then there's no time to lose. To the GUP A. Dashie, keep an eye on the ship. We'll be back as soon as we can. Aye, aye, Captain. Everybody this way. <laughs> There it is. The old octopod. Shiver me whiskers. I much prefer the new one. Activate helmets. We're going in. The quickest way in is through the manual steering pod. But how are we going to get in, Captain? Ah, I know a little trick. <laughs> wow. It's just like home. Only not. Only very not. Only very, very not? This is not how I left these chairs. Tweak, we don't have much time. Uh, right. The bubble converter should be in here. It'll just take a minute, Cap. A fast! What was that? <gasps> I didn't see anything. But there was something. This place gives me the creeps. <laughs> Ta-da! And it looks like it's in great shape. Well, that was easy. Or not. Oh, that's better. No, it's not. Something grabbed the bubble converter right out of my paw. I told you there was something in here. Whatever it is, it has our bubble converter. Tweak, sound the octo alert. Uh, Kip, this one doesn't work. Oh, yes, of course. Octonauts, to your stations! Uh, Octonauts, are you there? Right here, Captain. Octonauts, I'm afraid this mission is taking longer than expected. There's something aboard this ship, and it's just stolen the bubble converter. Whoa! Um, is everything all right there? Uh, everything's under control, Captain. Oh, and we're getting quite a workout. Oh. Hang in there. We're moving as fast as we can. Octonauts, let's split up and find that thief. I'm entering the sick bay now. No sign of the converter. Who's there? Uh, uh, hey, let me out of here, you orange. Whatever you are. I'm in the game pod, mateys. Just a volleyball. Cut it out! Cut it out! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight balls. Who can throw eight balls at once? I've reached the launch bay. Looks like someone's been down here moving stuff around. Ink? Huh? The barrels are back. But how? Now this.
This is scary. A library with no books. Huh. We must have left one behind. Whoa! Oh. What on earth? Captain, I saw some attack me with volleyball. Came out of nowhere. Uh, Captain, what are you doing on the floor? <laughs> oh, right. Uh, something just grabbed me. We'd better get to the bottom of this. Come in, Shellington. We need help identifying a mysterious creature. <laughs> Certainly, Captain. What can you tell me about it? Well, it's got tentacles. And it can throw eight things at once. And it squirts ink. And it's orange. Hmm. Oh, sounds like a giant Pacific octopus. I agree. My Pacific cousins are the largest species of octopus. And they often make their homes in old abandoned ships. <laughs> well, how about that? I modeled the octopod after the giant Pacific octopus, and now there's one living in it. Yeah, but why did it steal our converter? It was probably just curious. Giant Pacific octopuses are very clever, and they always investigate new things. Hmm. Then maybe we can give it something new to be curious about. This ought to get its attention. And then, when it comes to investigate, we'll get our converter. Everybody into position. Lights out. Look. It's huge. Shh. Just a little closer. Now! <laughs> Stay alert, everyone. It might make a swim for it. Yeah. It escaped. And it got the flashlight out of the jar. But where did it go? Huh? <laughs> Hello. Goodbye. Follow that octopus. Easy now. We're not going to hurt you. Oof. Search everywhere. Ah, no sign of the eight-armed scallywag. She has to be in here somewhere. Ink. Ah, hello there. Stay back. Don't make me ink you again, you invaders. Invaders? Us? Yes, this is my home. I'd arranged everything just the way I like it, and I don't appreciate you barging in without permission and moving everything around. We're sorry. We only came for our bubble converter. This thing? It was in my home, so it's mine. Hmm. You are absolutely right. We didn't realize you were living here. Perhaps you'd be willing to trade it for something new. Huh? You have yourself a deal, young fellow. How about we shake on that? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the new bubble converted did the trick. How's it feel, Cap? The octopod's running perfectly, Tweak. I'm just glad we're not running anymore. Look, we're passing the old octopod now. Hmm? Looks like you left the light on. <laughs> Everybody wave. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Hold still, Mr. Lobster. There, good as new. Ah, thanks, mate. Dashi to Peso. Come in, Peso. There's a storm heading your way, and it looks like a big one. Thanks, Dashi. Oh, 
head back to the octopod right away. That's the problem. The storm's moving fast. You won't make it back here in time. Peso, your best option is to get in the Gup E and find a safe place to wait it out. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll check back in when the storm passes. Stay safe, Peso. It'll be safe down here. Come on. Good idea. I'll just get the Gup E. Oh, no. Captain, come in, Captain! I don't believe it! Just a little further! is the perfect place to wait out the storm. <sighs> well, it's kept us safe for many, many years. Who said that? Good day, mate. Flappity flippers! <laughs> There's no need to be frightened. It's only us tree lobsters. Tree lobsters? Now, now, give him space, fellas. <laughs> we don't get guests up here very often. I'm old Howie, at your service. I'm Peso. I am... You actually live up here. Yeah, of course. But it's a giant rocky spike in the middle of the ocean. Ah, oh, you must be wondering how we got here. Well, <laughs> actually, I can't seem to remember. It all happened so long ago, you see. But uh, we've made a happy little home for ourselves up here. How many of you are there? Only 24 at the last count. Oh, all right. All right. But once these eggs hatch, there'll be a few more. Oh. <sighs> ah, goodness me, where are my manners? You must be exhausted. Rest up, my friend. We'll look after you tonight. Thanks. I just think I need to rest my eyes for a bit. Lobsters. Oh. Where did they go? Ah, tree lobsters or no tree lobsters, I'd better get back to the octopod. Mm. Looks like there's only one way down. Ahoy there, matey! Quasi, Captain! Glad to see you're all right, Peso. We found the guppy, but we've been searching for you all morning. You won't believe what happened to me last night. You can tell us all about it back at the octopod. Climb aboard. Let's get you home. There were only 24 of them, and they all lived under this one tiny shrub. But then, when I woke up, they were gone. Yeah. Based on our location, it sounds like you washed up here on Ball's Pyramid. Strange. Ball's Pyramid has been explored many, many times, and nobody's ever found any tree lobsters. I've never even heard of a tree lobster before. Peso, are you sure that maybe it wasn't all just a dream? It's not unusual to have strange dreams when you're in a dangerous situation. I don't know. Maybe it was all a dream. I believe you, matey. You, you do? I've heard enough strange tales to know there's usually a scrap of truth behind them. There's got to be something in the library about these tree lobsters of yours. Come on. Mysterious island monsters, castaway creatures, exotic beasts of land and sea. Quasi, it's been hours and we still haven't found anything about tree lobsters. Just a few more books, matey. <laughs> a tree lobster? Ha <laughs> ha! I knew we'd find them. Listen to this. 
Lord Howe's island stick insects, or tree lobsters, once lived on islands off the coast of Australia. Shiver me whiskers! It's amazing, isn't it? Unfortunately, no one has seen a living tree lobster in many years. I see one right now and it's on your head! Ow! A baby tree lobster. I must have somehow brought one of the eggs back with me. We'd better get you back home. Yow! He's getting away! Yow! Quasi, Peso, what's going on? There's a real life tree lobster loose on the ship! We have to catch him, Captain! Sound the octo alert! Octonaut to the H. Uh, no, um, Octonaut to the lodge! Um, follow that tree lobster! <laughs> Incredible! I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> we knew that tree lobsters were real, didn't we, Peso? <laughs> He's heading for the kitchen. Watch out, vegetables! It up slowly, Tunip. We don't want to startle him. Huh? Looka, looka. Looks like he's heading for the garden pot. Let's go. I don't see the little guy anywhere, Camp. Keep looking. He's got to be around here somewhere. Huh? <sighs> Under a plant, just like home. Oh, all that running must have tired him out. He's sound asleep. We need to get him back to his home on Bull's Pyramid. Peso, Quasi, to the Gup A. Wake up, little fella. You're home. <coughs> you mean you climbed up there all by yourself, Peso? I did have a little help from a huge wave. Well, we'll be getting a little help from these climbing claws. Oh. Hold on, little fella. <laughs> Shouldn't be much further now. I think the shrub is just a... <laughs> I've got you, matey. And I've got you. <laughs> Catch, Captain. Ah. The shrub. Kind of scraggy little thing, isn't it? This is where the tree lobsters live, Peso. Yes, but where are they? <sighs> Peso! Old Howie! Huh? <laughs> You're back! And you brought little Howie Jr. with you. <coughs> oh, we were so worried. <coughs> but where were you? Well, sleeping, of course. We tree lobsters are nocturnal. We only come out at night. <coughs> well, I'll be a sea monkey's uncle. That's why no one's ever seen you before. Peso, this is an incredible discovery. You'll notice that our tribe has grown. Number 25 and 26 hatch today. And Howie Jr. here makes 27. Keep an eye on Howie Jr. He's a lively one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing him back to us. Won't you all stay the night as our guests? We'd be honoured, but we should head back home before it gets dark. Goodbye, old Howie. Goodbye, tree lobsters. Oh, oh, um, how do we get down from here anyway? I think you're going to like this part, Quasi.
What are you doing, mateys? We are listening to the most popular song of the summer. That doesn't sound like any sea shanty I've ever heard. That's because it's a whale song made by humpback whales. Look. Whoa! These whales are on their way to their summer feeding grounds. They use their songs to talk to each other. And they can hear the songs even when they're miles and miles apart. And the song they're singing now has been really popular this year. All the humpbacks are singing it. It's the only song on the radio. Listen. Here. Here. And here. Humpbacks all over the world are singing the exact same song. Incredible. Let me try. Uh, hang on. That's new. Maybe they got tired of the old song. No, I mean, it sounds different. I've never heard a voice like it before. Maybe these whales have, Dashy. Good idea, Captain. Excuse me, humpback whales. Yes? Sorry to interrupt your journey, but we just wondered if you'd ever heard a song like this before. Uh, nope, not heard that before. It doesn't even sound like a humpback. The singing doesn't match anything in the Octopod sound collection. Whatever's making that noise, there's nothing like it in the ocean. This could be an entirely new species of whale. Or an entirely new species of sea monster. Well, there's only one way to find out. Octonauts, it's time to investigate. I'm picking up something big on the tracker. Very big. It should be on the other side of this reef. Ah, there's nothing here. No, but I thought I saw something. Me too. Something big. The trick is still saying it's up ahead. Then let's go, mateys. It's gone again. I get the feeling it doesn't want to be disturbed. Let's go forward gently this time, so we don't scare it. Whatever it is. You hear that? It sounds so sad. Like the world's loneliest sea monster. Or the world's loneliest whale. That's a humpback whale. But his voice is like no humpback I've ever heard. I think he's looking for food. He's a young one and he looks very skinny, Captain. Then he might need our help. Activate helmets. Hello there. That's a very interesting song you're singing. Oh, thanks. It's my I'm Hungry song. My name's Joe, by the way. Are you on your own, Joe? Yep, I'm pretty much always on my own. I guess the other humpbacks kind of don't understand my singing. Captain, Joe is far from the summer feeding grounds. Without the other whales to show him the way, he won't have enough to eat. Joe, why don't you come with us to our octopod and we'll see if we can help you. I don't suppose there's any food at this here octopod. I'm uh, kind of hungry. Absolutely. Follow us. Right behind you. Mmm, <laughs> these here fish biscuits are pretty good. Captain, I think I found the cause of Joe's unusual voice. What is it, Peso? These are the tubes inside Joe's nose. And these are the tubes inside a typical humpback's nose. See how much smaller Joe's are? Of course! Whales sing by pushing air through their nose. But because Joe's tubes are so narrow, his songs sound different. Uh-huh! So that's why the early whales can't understand me. Yow! What was that? Oh, gee. <laughs> Just my tummy rumbling. I don't suppose you have any more of those fish biscuits. Captain, Joe can't just eat fish biscuits. He needs a proper whale diet. Yeah, and the vegetables need a break. Hmm, Joe needs food and fast, so we need to get him to join a group of whales who show him to the summer feeding grounds. The last group is on its way to the feeding grounds. After they've gone, there are no more humpbacks in this part of the ocean. Then time is running out. Dashy, sound the octo alert. Octonauts, to the launch bay. Joe here is hungry and all alone. If we're going to help him, 
We need to find a way to make the other whales understand Joe's song. I might have an idea, Cap. With a little help, I think I could build a special machine that Joe could wear that would make his voice sound like the other humpbacks. Oh, really? Oh, but won't that take a long time? I'll have it done faster and you can say bunch of munchy crunchy fish biscuits. It's our best shot. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> Here you are, Joe. You can wear the Joe coder on your neck. Just tap it with your fin when you want to sing, and your songs will go from this... Go ahead, Joe. <coughs> ...to this! <coughs> hey! I sound like a regular humpback. Now I can... <coughs> But now Joe's gone. A loud noise frightened him. We better find him fast, or the other humpbacks will be gone for good. There's no time to lose. Let's go. <sighs> no sign of him, Captain. We found Joe before, so we can do it again. Peso, check the tracker and look for a big shape. Uh, I'm looking at the tracker, and it's covered in big shapes. Of course. We're surrounded by whales. We have to find Joe before they pass by on their way to the feeding ground. Maybe we could sing. I'm not sure now's the time for singing, matey. No, I mean, what if we could use the Joe coder to make me sound like Joe? Good idea. Then Joe will want to see who else sings like him. Tweak. I'll just change that and reverse this and there. That ought to do the trick. Right, Peso. Go for it. Here goes nothing. I hope you're listening, Joe. <gasps> what was that? It might be my tummy. Think I ate something funny for lunch. Keep trying, Peso. You can do it. <gasps> That's it! He's done it, Captain! Now we just have to hope Joe can hear it and wants to see who's singing his song. There aren't many whales left to pass, Captain. Soon it'll be too late. Come on, Joe. Where are you? What? That sounds like my voice. Hey, so where'd you learn to sing like that? I'll show you, Joe. Oh, it ain't gonna make that terrible noise again, is it? It's fixed, I promise. <laughs> Woo! I can't believe it! It works! <laughs> now, that's more like it. Let's just hope someone's listening. Hey, who's that singing? What a great song! It's our pal, Joe. Oh, I love your style. We're on our way to the feeding grounds. You should come with us. Oh, gee, thanks. And thank you, Octonaut, for having me sing my song. Listen. They're all singing your song. Now go. Good work, everyone. Joe should have no trouble finding the feeding grounds now that he's teamed up with the other humpbacks. And they really seem to like his song. It's not just Joe's friends. Humpbacks are singing it everywhere. Looks like it's catching on here, too. Octopod to Shellington. How's the eel watching coming along? 
Uh, it's a bit tricky, Captain. These garden eels are rather shy. They keep hiding in the sand. Good thing I've got all night to study them. Are you sure you'll be okay spending the night out there in the Gup E? Oh, of course. I've got enough kelp cakes and clam sandwiches to last me till morning. Well, good luck tonight. We'll check back in the morning. Octopod signing off. Captain, are you sure he'll be okay all alone out there? He'll be safe inside the guppy, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty quiet night. Nothing out there except one little jellyfish. What could go wrong? Let's power down for the night. On me. Look at all those jellyfish. Shellington is still out there. Quasi, sound the octo alert. <coughs> Octonaut, to the HQ. Good morning, Octonaut. I'm sure you've noticed something strange happening outside. Professor Inkling, what's going on out there? It seems there was a jellyfish bloom overnight, Peso. Jellyfish bloom? When jellyfish find a place they like, where there's lots of food to eat and nothing around that eats them, lots of jellyfish will go to that place at the same time. It's called a bloom. Barnacles to Shellington. I think you'd better drive the Gup E back to the octopod. You'll be safer here. Well, I would drive back, but uh, I fell asleep with the lights on and... Now the Gup's batteries are nearly dead. See? Why don't you just swim home? Uh, that wouldn't be a very good idea, Quasi. These are sea nettle jellyfish. Their tentacles will sting you if you touch them. Stay where you are, Shellington. We're coming to get you. Quasi, peso, into the Gup A. <laughs> Never seen anything like this. Quasi, activate windscreen wipers. Hi, Captain. Let's move slowly. We don't want to hurt any of these jellyfish. Hmm, they're too thick to drive through. They're clogging the intakes, Captain. Right, we need to get back to the octopod and make a new plan. Activate helmets, everybody. Prepare to eject. We'll have to swim back to the octopod. Yeah! Watch out for the tentacles! Go! Oh, no, you don't. Ouch! It's a jellyfish sting, all right. How does it feel? It stings. Don't worry, Captain. I know just the thing for it. Thanks, Tunip. I knew you'd have some in the kitchen. This is the best emergency treatment there is for a jellyfish sting. It smells like vinegar. It is vinegar. It should help with the stinging. Ow. How does your paw feel now? It feels better. Ugh, it smells worse. Thanks, Peso. Now, I've got to get back out there and rescue Shellington. Ah, oh, ow. Captain, you need to stay right here and rest until your paw is completely healed. Don't worry, Captain. We'll rescue Shellington. We? But we'll have to suit up first. Come on, Peso. Are you sure this is a good idea? Relax, Peso. Our deep sea suits will protect us from their stinks. We'll find Shellington, give him this extra suit, and then we'll all go home sting-free. See? I didn't feel a thing. 
Peso, how's it going out there? Uh, a bit rockier than we'd expected. We can't see a thing out here. Don't worry. Dashie will help guide you to Shellington. Just keep going forward until you get to the sandy sea floor. Thanks, Dashie. How are you holding up out there, Shellington? Uh, well, it is starting to get a bit stuffy in here, and I'm all out of kelp cakes. Sit tight, Shellington. Quasi and Peso are on their way. It feels like we've been walking for hours. Keep going, guys. You're almost there. But we still don't see anything except jellyfish. Shellington should be down on the sandy sea floor, right at the bottom of this rocky Whoa. cliff. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, guys. <laughs> The sandy sea floor. Shellington must be close by. He could be right in front of our faces and we wouldn't be able to see him. Huh? Now, don't go wandering off, Peso. I may never find you again. It's one of Shellington's garden eels. We must be really close. There's another one. There. <laughs> Fascinating. The garden eels are even faster than you are, Quasi. Shellington, are you all right? Well, my leg keeps falling asleep, but I think I'll be okay. Come on, we've got to get back to the octopod. Put this on and let's go. Quasi, Peso, how's it going out there? Well, we found Shellington and we followed some garden eels up this cliff, but then we lost. Quasi! <laughs> gotcha! Mayday, Captain! My tail's tangled in tentacles! Help! Quasi! Come in, Quasi! Mm. Oh! <sighs> I never should have let Shellington stay out to study those garden eels. Ah, garden eels! That's it! If I can't get through the jellyfish, I'll go under them, just like the garden eels. Professor Inkling, does anything live in the rocky cliff beneath the octopod? Interesting question. As far as I know, nothing lives down there. So I wouldn't be harming any creatures if I made a tunnel through it. Not at all. There's only solid rock there. But what about your paw? Don't worry about me, Professor. Tweak? Hey, Cap. Prepare the gup D. I'm going to need some extra tunneling power. You got it, Cap. Just hold on. A garden eel living in a rocky cliff? It can't be. That's no garden eel. That's Captain, Captain Barnacles. Good to see you again, Shellington. Come on, we've got to hurry back to the octopod before this tunnel starts to fill up with jellyfish. Tweak, close the octa hatch. Looks like your paw has healed up nicely, Captain. You know, the jellyfish are actually kind of pretty. Aye, but not when you're tangled in their tentacles. Look at the size of that one. It's good to have you back, Shellington. Oh, thanks, Captain. <laughs> Ooh. Is that vinegar I can smell? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe we're back in these chilly waters again. 
It's all in the name of science, Quasi. Indeed, the creatures of the Arctic Zone make some fascinating sounds. And with the Octopod's underwater microphone, we can record them for our collection. Ooh, what's making that sound? Oh, <laughs> just my tummy. <laughs> I ate some of Tunip's kelp cakes for lunch, with a wee bit too much hot sauce. Wait, I'm picking up something else. Listen. Sounds like walruses to me. The computer will match the sound with the animal, and we'll see if you're right, Captain. Ah, oh, walruses. Now let me guess the next one. It is a strange sound from a strange creature. And this strange creature could only be the... Herring? Yes, herring. They talk by blowing gas bubbles out of their behinds. Out of their behinds? Ooh, what's that coming from? Sounds like some kind of whale song. It is. Bowhead whales. They only live here in the Arctic, so their sounds can't be recorded anywhere else. Look. Howdy, folks. Hello, worthy octonauts. Pleased to meet you. That's an enormous head, even for a whale. The head of each bowhead whale is as big as a bus. We're not aiming to brag now, but we bowheads do have the strongest, toughest heads in the Arctic. How tough? Tough enough to smash through just about anything. Yow! And we make some pretty big sounds, too. Ready, boys? <laughs> getting a perfect recording of them. Bowhead whales sing all the time, while they're traveling, playing, even eating. It's how they talk to each other. It's always nice to make new friends out here on the Arctic range, but now we've got to hit the trail. It's feeding time. Come on, giddy up, partners. Bye. Now. Care now. Bye. 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 Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, what's that? More whales? It sounds familiar. Narwhals, Captain. Sounds like a call for help. It is. Then we haven't got a moment to lose. Quasi, peso, to the launch bay. <laughs> It's coming from inside that ice tunnel. Shiver me whiskers, Captain. Look, there's been an avalanche. They must be somewhere behind all that ice. Ahoy in there! Narwhals! Are you all right? Help us, please! We are trapped in here! We can't get out! I know that voice. Boris? Ah, Barnacles, is this you? Yes, old friend. What happened? Me and my two friends, we dove down very, very deep. Everything was good, yes, until the pack ice moved and trapped us in here. The ice, it is too thick for a narwhal to punch through. <laughs> and we are almost out of air. Then we need to get you out of there now. Octonauts to the HQ. <laughs> Three narwhals are trapped under the ice, and they're running out of air. Jumping jellyfish! Narwhals are whales, and whales breathe air. They can only stay underwater for a little while, and then they need to come up to breathe again. We've got to get them out of the ice, but first, let's get them some air. We'll run a breathing tube down there right away, Cap. Octonauts, let's do this. <laughs> I found a small opening for the breathing tube. Here you go. We're pushing in a breathing tube, Boris. It won't be long now. Da, please hurry, old friend. We're feeling very weak. Ah, it's caught on 
found something. Yes, that did it. There it is. Ah, thank you. Much better. Now that you've got air to breathe, it's time to break through that ice. Dashi, let's try the Gupsy's icebreaker. Icebreaker activated. Not even a crack. Let's bring in the drill. Tweak will need the Gup D. All right, Cap. I'll have him out of there faster than you can say bunch of munchy crunchy carrots. Marbles, back away as far as you can. to break through this ice, and we need it now. Captain, we could melt the ice with a blowtorch. Good idea, but it would take too long. Hmm. <laughs> How about blasting it with a sonic slicer? The ice is too thick for that. I've got an old pirate cannon under me bed, but I'm all out of cannonballs. <laughs> Whales. Tough enough to smash through just about anything. Good thinking, Tulip. Now all we have to do is find our new bowhead whale friends again. Let's call them back to the octopod by playing their songs. Try it louder, Dashy. We don't have much time. your help. Three narwhals are trapped in the ice and we can't break them free. Well, we bowheads are the greatest icebreakers in the seven seas. Ain't that right, boys? Yeah, that's, that's right. right. You ready to take a ride, partner? Captain, help is on the way. Thanks, Dashie. How much longer? <laughs> Look! <laughs> 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 Morris, narwhals, everyone, get back! Nichols, my dear old friend, thanks to you and your Octonaut crew for saving us. And you two are mighty bowhead whale friends. Oh, shucks, Boris, we're nothing. Always glad to help a fellow whale in need. Yes, thank you, bowheads. It's amazing what you can do when you put your heads together. <laughs> Especially when you've got heads this big. Ain't that right, boys? Happy trails, partners! Yip, 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 yip. Bye. 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 All right. Say, ah. Uh... Mm -hmm. Oh, you're just a little shy. Don't worry. I won't hurt you. Captain? Oh. 
Accordion music, Captain Barnacles, and it really helps this one relax for his medical checkup. Oh, it was nothing. I hope you haven't caught a cold up here in the Arctic. Oh no, we orcas are used to the cold Arctic weather. <laughs> yes, you're one healthy orca. Thanks, Peso. Thanks, Captain. Bye. Bye, orcas. Hope to see you again soon. Goodbye. Whew. Six orca throat exams, three fin and tail checkups, and teeth cleaning for the whole pod. What a day. Good work, Peso. But we'd better hurry back to the octopod. With these chunks of ice moving in from all directions, it could get dangerous. It's worse than I thought. Phew, that was close. Captain. I see it. Hang on, Peso. Brace yourself! Hey, so, are you okay? I think so. Are you? I'm all right, but I'm not sure the gup is. We need to get it out of this chunk of ice. It's no use, we're stuck. What'll we do? Don't worry, we'll get out of this. Let's call the octopod. Professor Inkling. Prepare to meet your match in the game of Pirate Drafts. I've asked. I've got you now. No, it looks like I've got you, Quasi. <laughs> ah, I've been suckered. Barnacles to Quasi. Come in, Quasi. We're going to need some help out here. Sound the octo alert. Aye, aye, Captain. Yow! Octonauts, to the launch bay! Octonauts, the Gup E has crashed. Peso and I are going to need some help getting back to the octopod. We'll have to hurry before the Gup E is hit by another giant chunk of ice. It could break the Gup. That's the problem. The Gup E is stuck in a giant chunk of ice. And we can't get it out. Oh. Hang on, mateys. I'll come out in the gup sea to give you a tow. I hope you can find us, Quasi. The crash damaged our gup finder. And we're drifting pretty quickly. Hmm. I'm seeing lots of ice chunks, but none with a gup in it. Better keep looking. Oh. I do hope Quasi can find us. Oh. It's getting bumpy. Uh-oh, we're heading straight for an iceberg. Flappity flippers. Abandon ship, Peso. <laughs> Where did the guppy go? Look. Oh, no. Don't worry, we just need to climb to the top and break the gup out of the iceberg. Climb to the top? Yes, we can do it. We're a team. Huh. Come on. Yes, we did. Now, the trick will be how to dig our gup out of this ice. Oh, all this moving ice is making me dizzy. I can't tell which way I'm going. Captain, come in, Cap. We've lost radio contact with the gup E, Quasi, but they should be around there. Keep looking. Oh, I've searched everywhere for them, but all I've found down here is ice, ice and more ice. What was that? It sounded like the captain's accordion music. Uh, 
Shiver me whiskers. It's not Captain Barnacles at all. It's the Orcas. Maybe they can help. Hey, look! Quasi! I heard your Orca songs. I thought it was Captain Barnacles. Captain Barnacles? We just left him and Peso a little while ago. Aye, but they never made it home. The Gup E crashed, and now they're lost somewhere in the ice. Oh, no! Oh, dear. Don't worry, Quasi. We Orcas will help you find them. Huh? Oh no, the ice is breaking in two. Peso, jump! Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> 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 Hang on. <sighs> Whoa! We've got to stay with the gun. Jump again. Whoa. Oh! Peso, use me as a bridge. Yes! Gotcha! Yeah, we've looked everywhere for him down here. Hey, what about spy hopping? Spy hopping? What's that? Spy hopping is how we look around up above the water. Yeah, watch me, Quasi. <laughs> well, I'm no walker, but I'll give it the old pirate try. You did it! Well done! Thanks, matey. But there's lots of ice up there, too. Better stay with the pod, Quasi. Yeah, we orcas always stick together. Aye, let's start spy hopping! I think I see something. It's Barnacles and Peso. We found them. What's happening? Quasi, you found us. I knew you would. Hi, thanks to our Orca pals here. But where's the guppy? Um, up there. It's still stuck in the ice. How are we going to get it back in the water? If only we could tip this iceberg back over again. I reckon our orca friends could help. Yeah, we love ice tipping. Ice tipping? It's what we orcas do to find food. We tip the chunks of ice over. Watch. Ready, set, tip! Yeah, you orcas can do everything. Now we can get the gups home. I just hope we don't crash into another ice chunk on our way back. Orcas, you know your way around these waters. Can you guide us out of here? Of course. Hi, orcas and octonauts always stick together. And I know exactly how to make the trip a little more fun. Oh no, what happened to you? The reef. I got knocked off of the reef. 
don't worry. My name's Peso, and I help any creature who's hurt or sick. May I examine you? Oh, so polite. I like this one. Examine away. What's going on here? <gasps> that does sound strange. We'll need to take an x-ray to see what's going on in there. Flappity flippers. There's a tiny shrimp inside you. And there's a sea star and a snail. There are all kinds of tiny creatures inside you. Of course there are. I'm a sea sponge. Oh, but I feel like there's something inside me that doesn't belong. Shellington, we need you in the sick bay right away. Oh, this is wonderful. I've never seen a finer example of commensalism. co -watalism? Commensalism. It means that all the little creatures inside the sponge get a safe place to live, even though the sponge doesn't get anything from them. It's not for nothing they call us sponges the hotels of the sea. And it doesn't bother you. No, not at all. I've never had any problems. Oh, until today. Yes, and if the sponge isn't happy, we aren't happy. Oh. <gasps> Where are we, anyway? Yeah, nobody bothered to ask us before they yanked us off our reef and stuck us in this pan. And what's with all the poking and prodding and light shining in me eyes? Well, oh. I say. This used to be a nice place to live. Come on, everybody, let's get out of here. Uh-oh, they're running out of room. We need to find places to put all these creatures fast. A room with a view. <sighs> That's the last one, Peso. Do you feel any better now that everybody's out? No. There's still something in there. What could it be? I don't know. But there's only one way to find out. We've got to take a closer look inside. Tunip, sponger scope, please. <laughs> All right. This shouldn't hurt, but you may feel a little... <laughs> ...tickle. Having a look in... no? See anything yet, Peso? Aha! <laughs> Shellington, what is that creature? It looks like a louse. A whale louse. <coughs> What are you looking at? A louse. No wonder I'm feeling so lousy. That thing doesn't belong inside of me. <laughs> You're telling me? He doesn't look like he's feeling very well either. Of course he isn't. Whale lice can only survive on whales, not inside sponges. Excuse me, Mr. Louse, but we need to get you out of this sponge right away. <laughs> oh, no! No way! I'm a whale louse! I ain't leaving until somebody finds me a whale to live on! Captain, the sponge won't feel better until the louse is out of her, and the louse won't feel better until he's back on a whale. Then there's only one thing to do. Peso, sound the Octo Alert! Octonauts, to the HQ! <laughs> Astronauts, we have to find a whale for a sick whale louse. And we need to find it fast. Both the sponge and the louse are feeling worse and worse. Ah, <laughs> oh, there be plenty of whales swimming in these waters. We'll find the nearest one and give the little castaway a home to call his own. Oh, it's not that simple, Quasi. Different kinds of whale lice live on different kinds of whale. We have to work out which whale species this louse came from. I'm running a scan now. Oh, there. Looks like this louse came from a sperm whale. There's no time to lose. Octonauts, let's do this. Don't worry. We'll have this louse out of you in no time, just as soon as we find him a sperm whale. 
There's something big coming up. A vast. It's a whale. Oh, but it's a blue whale, not a sperm whale. Hmm. Keep looking, everyone. There. Nope, that's a humpback whale. I knew that. Oh, I'm starting to feel a little faint. Oh, you're feeling faint. How do you think I feel? <laughs> Hurry, Captain. They're getting worse. We're coming up on another well now. Uh, I can't tell what kind it is, Captain. It's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, a sperm wheel! Excellent. Peso, you'd better suit up and... Oh, whoa, whoa. Hey, you stay away from my baby. Oh, the whale's mother. Sperm whales will do anything to protect their young. Hang on, everyone! The mother whale's not giving up! Peso, Quasi, I'll keep her distracted. You get the louse on her. But how are we going to do that? Okay, Mr. Louse, this is it. Oh, oh, I don't know if I can make it. Oh, for goodness sake. But this is where you belong, on a sperm whale. I'm just too weak. Hurry, Peso. I don't know how long I can keep her distracted. I've run into some complications, Captain. I'm going to have to perform an emergency lousectomy. Lousectomy? Lousectomy? But I'll need my medical bag. Just tell me what you need, matey! Tweezers, Quasi. I need tweezers. <laughs> now I can't see inside you, so let me know when I'm getting close. A little... a little to the left. Steady. Oh, too far left. Now to the right. Steady. You've almost got him. Steady. And... gotcha! Oh! Oh! Hey! Hey! I'm home! How do you feel? Oh, now that I'm back on a whale, I feel great! Thanks, Doc! And what about you? I feel great! Captain, the louse is on the whale. I repeat, the louse is on the whale. Both he and Sponge are doing fine. Great work, Peso. This is fascinating. Another example of commensalism. The louse gets a home and the whale doesn't mind at all. But she does mind us being this close to her baby. We need to get out of here. Everybody ready? Ready. Ready, matey. Clear. Gotcha! must have brushed against the reef here. Aye, the louse must have fallen off when the whale knocked the sponge loose. Well, now they're both back where they belong, healthy and happy and... Excuse me! Got room for a few more in there! Of course! As long as you're not a whale, louse, I don't mind at all. Come on, fellas! Here we go! Oh. <laughs> It's <laughs> a wiggly one. <laughs> I'm Captain Barnacles. I, matey. Come on, everyone join in. Right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 